Uh, my name is Sailesh. I am from Chennai. Basically, a financial certified financial planner. Uh, commerce graduate from the University of Chennai. Uh, and then I did some courses in the NSE, all these certifications on derivatives, commodities, strategies on derivatives. And uh, in fact, this was in 2003 that I got my ARN uh, certification. And uh, I worked in Indian corporates, American MNCs, and I moved to family office setup uh, in about, uh, about somewhere at in 2000, 2001-2000. Basically, after doing this ARN and uh, NSE, a uh, few certifications, uh, all over in 2005, 6, 7, I was uh, in fact, uh, trading, doing intraday, doing uh, commodities trading and things like that. And then, then everybody knows what happened, 2008, all burn figures. <laughs> uh, that is when, in fact, uh, the need for something more knowledgeable, more which could preserve, was always there. And uh, I enrolled for CFP rather late in 2011 after a lot of postponements. I managed to do all the four modules, but the fifth module was uh, very, very, uh, very hectic. Like it, I was not very confident. Basically, apprehensions were from multiple <coughs> trash questions to uh, getting into a case study with four hours, sitting in one place for four hours and answering something based on something displayed on the computer. You don't have access to Excel, oh, open office. <laughs> The last thing you want to do. <laughs> so then, okay, I I heard about uh, Mr. Ku's program uh, in Hyderabad, and I was not even very sure that I'll be doing it because it was after two days, and he called me up uh, from Bombay and said, "You have to be there," and because he was not sure of his Chennai plans. So I said, "Okay, let me take jump," and I went to Hyderabad. This two days changed completely. Uh, he is basically a wonderful person, and uh, no two doubt, and people have spoken uh, about him. He he doesn't just jump over the training as it is, like start something with the training. His testing of the aptitude, the first test, what Manu mentioned, it for it, it gives you a company. He understands what what the particip participants are out and what's the knowledge level of the people, and then he uh, starts getting into the training program. So basically the five step process, the updated question bank and post training support like uh, like uh, what uh, Anubhav mentioned, hesitation to call him was always there but then even one call definitely it will not go unanswered. That, that assurance even I could uh, vouch for time. Then I have been since more into family office, multiple family office. Though I joined as a single family office and I was working on a single family platform managing the wealth of a particular family. I post my certification, moved into a, the same setup with the uh, authorization to have manage multiple families. Uh, Niche segment again, as what Manu mentioned. Uh, I manage clients from who are not based in India, of the four five families. Some of them are in Mauritius, some of them are in US, couple of them in India, very much. The activities are some basically the same wealth management, wealth planning, administration, tax and legal support, asset management, and trusteeship services risk management. In wealth planning, basically the same things what we do, uh, trust, basically uh, investments, uh, basically generation of wealth, 
in terms of the second generation, their business, how do they get into their business, what they want to do, carry on, we guide them in that. I am on the board of some companies where the second generation is starting on their own, so that we guide them on the personal, the, the financial part of the corporate uh, finance for them. And then on the administration part, it involves your accounting, the tax compliance, the tax and legal support. Legal support involves uh, property related uh, documentation, formation of trust, wills, execution of wills. <coughs> then again, uh, whenever there is a change, a codicil to be executed and things like that. In trusteeship services, what we do is basically uh, managing, uh, forming a private family trust wherein uh, the existing business owners are confident if, if they're not, they're not sure of the next generation taking it up and they want to ensure that the wealth what they've created passes on as per uh, in, in their lifetime and beyond their lifetime when they want to give it to the next generation or when they don't want to give it to the next generation and things like that. Create a family trust. The trust is basically again at the discretion of the settler who is basically the owner of the uh, <coughs> assets and uh, the trustee is designated with the responsibility of executing <coughs> all the wishes listed out in the trust as for the trustee. What happens primarily in a trust form of uh, uh, institution is uh, the the, the settler is able to transfer wealth and the, the, the income of the family, income as well as the corpus to the next generation as per how they want it. Uh, since the, if it, at any point of time they are not confident of how the second generation is going to manage the business, they want to move out of the business and get professionals to run the business, but the family wealth has to be protected. So that point of time, the trust plays a vital role where the biz business is run separately by, by independent professionals and the trust manages the holdings of the business in terms of the shares and shares in the business and various assets of the family. In terms of risk management, uh, being h &A clients, basically this is becoming a, this is uh, always uh, like Manu, when Manu mentioned uh, managers, uh, selector. There are so many people who approach pe uh, that product selling happening at every private. Every private banker, people like at that level, they definitely and H and A clients typically get easily carried away when they hear something from somebody. In their social circle is so large. So keeping them grounded to the basic investment philosophy of what is defined in the family trust and making them not to do venture out in risk profile pro products not suitable for their profile. That is basically the biggest risk management that we do most often. And of course the other risk management in terms of insurance management insurance of uh, the real estate and other family assets. A family office functioning basically the same way what Manu mentioned, uh, it could be a small setup where uh, you have, you know the niche where we are operating, the operating uh, segment needs to be clearly thought of and uh, the opportunities are immense because there are so many families where the second generation or third generation and beyond which there is no wealth left over. So preserving that 
and adding more value to the client is is always a challenge and it's going to be a challenge because people want to run their business more than manage the money and strength of a financial planner here in comes into more into play because the financial planner understands the the uh, basically a personal cfo he understands basically what what are the spending habits what are the uh, in uh, what you call uh, spending habits and various other uh, personal finance practices of the family and family members so that way a cfp definitely adds value to this challenges uh again uh, in terms of charging a fee it's always a challenge in every every part of the practice and uh, but when there is a value proposition yes definitely i don't think we can uh, that would be a bigger uh, revenue stream uh, basically what uh, we do is uh, on a annual basis based on the aum the fee is fixed and then there is a direct uh, portfolio the fee is fixed on based on the direct model and to some clients in fact we do a uh, all trail uh, directly it's it's all trail model also what we follow this goal based comprehensive financial planning would definitely be core of any cfp and uh, servicing of prospective clients yes this sometimes helps because we never know what is the wallet share of wallet size of any particular client even before we we do our initial interaction so uh, in fact recently there was somebody who came in with this uh, big request and somebody at the their the investments where both the parents had passed away without any nominations in any of the mutual funds and uh, there was this transmission of unit had to be done trans to about <coughs> eight nine folios we had to get everything uh, all the documentation done and there were three legal heirs and the legal heir no objection letters had to be got and in fact it was a whole 3 4 months process with all the fund houses and all we got this done without any thought on okay let's do it for that but then the client came back with a good sizable aum saying please you do ma manage all the funds hence for and since then in fact they have been actively involved in, in their personal finance management with us so that way i think without apprehensions taking up something thinking what would be the size of the wallet or what we would be earning from this would definitely it might not make importance because first we serve it and then we see what comes out and then i think it would make a good proposition to be in estate planning succession planning for the client basically through the trust importance of will not be emphasized more what manu has mentioned earlier uh family trust as i mentioned earlier family private family trust basically it 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 is not a tax planning tool people may say that you can create a trust and you can reduce taxes and no taxes has nothing to do with family trust it's only a vehicle to pass on the wealth of a family or individual to the next generation basically it helps when you're not sure whether the next generation will be capable to handle it that's about it thank you very much Sure, it is a second session, so we might not have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. This comes. Uh -huh.